Well, hello, today I'm going to be restoring a rather nice little leather bag. A little bag with a little bit of history, actually, because one of my sons very kindly bought this for my birthday. And we think it might have been used by perhaps a bus conductor, possibly a train guard, um, but possibly a bus conductor in Ireland. <laughs> We're not definite on this, but it's got a nice big pocket at the front for cash and a smaller pocket at the back for uh, notes, etc. Anyway, it's probably typical of quite a few bags, if you find an old vintage bag that you like. It's probably fairly typical in as much as bits of stitching are just beginning to come undone. It's in, say, pretty good condition overall. The leather is very dry and it's lost a little bit of its surface. Now, all of these things are easily put right and I'll show you how to do it in this video. I don't want to change the character of the bag, so there's a bit of a sort of balance here between bringing it back to life and, you know, changing its character, but I will be sympathetic. <laughs> so, as is pretty typical for bags of this period, it's been sewn around using quite a nice, like, hemp-type thread, so a, na a natural sort of thread. The trouble with these is that over time they tend to rot. And just at the top here, where it's obviously a stress point, it's come undone. So I'm going to redo the stitches, just going back a little way, and go up and then back down slightly with some new thread, just to toughen up that area there. Now, I'm not going to use a natural hemp on this, but I have got a braided polyester thread, which visually looks very similar, but it will actually, I think, be, well, more durable on such a stress point. Now, looking at this thread, you'd probably think it was a natural thread when you look at it close. I, even I had to do a quick double check. But um, one way to check a thread, if you do ever wonder, is take a lighter and just see if it burns. If it burns like that, it's clearly a polyester type thread. Nice and rock proof. The other little <laughs> tip I've got here is, do you see this cover on here? You can sometimes buy these for sh um, in packs and they're very useful for putting over coils like this to stop them unravelling in your box. This particular cover actually came off some flowers that was protecting the stems. So to remove a section of the older thread, what I'll do is use a seam ripper. These are very useful. If you do a lot of sewing, you'll obviously know about these. Uh, but what you have here is a point which can get in between the stitches and then it's like a sharp knife just in the U-bend there and it's very good for pulling a stitch out and cutting it. So I'll just take this back a little bit, not much. I can pick the threads out. If they don't come easily, I can then just cut them like that and pull them away. So I've got nice clean access then to put in my new little top section of thread up there. So I've stripped out the old stitches going back about an inch and a quarter and I'm back to nice solid stitching here. What I'm now going to do is start my stitches but I'm going to run over the last two of the old stitches and the reason for that is really just to lock them in. So, oops. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going over the old stitches here, just doing two needles with my saddle stitch. I've put up quite a good video on saddle stitching where I do um, the front of a belt with a nice decorative saddle stitch. But just to give you an idea what I'm doing, same needle, each needle goes through the same hole. And what this is doing now is my new stitches are binding over the top of the old stitches just on these last two stitches and that will help lock them down. Right, pull it tight. So there you are, they are sitting and crushing those old stitches and locking them down. I'll carry on stitching up here and then I will go back about four stitches just so it doesn't unravel at all. 
Now this thread I'm using, it is a tad lighter. It's all I have available. Um, my options here are just to accept its repair and leave it lighter. And in a way, that's like a bit of the history of the bag. Another option is I put a little bit of leather dye on top and just blend it in. A bit of felt pen even, just to blend it in. I'll have a look at it. I'll do it and then I'll look at it. In a way, I quite like the idea of leaving it as an obvious little repair. Bit of the bag story. Anyway, I'll carry on. I'll sew down there. So I've taken the stitches up and then I've come back with double stitching that way. I now have my two loose ends and all I'm going to do with these is poke them up through the side seam and trim them. That will sort of help lock them in place. Just a little trick, but it's quite a useful one for something like this. Pull them again nice and tight and I can just trim those off. I can even if I want to because it's polyester thread, lovely and strong. I can just burn those in. So that's a nice little bit of repair there. I may tone it a little bit. I'll think about that one. I want to do the same thing on one of the straps. Now this one is very nicely skived, this strap. So you see how they've got it thinning off at the end and they've done it really nicely. So you've got a really flush fit there. I do like the way I do this on my belts so they look thinner on the wearer but you skive the back there and it makes it all nice and flush and looks sort of generally neater. Now this stitching is quite worn both sides so I think I can actually pull it out with my hands. I think I will just simply renew both sides because I actually don't want it failing in the next sort of 20 years. So I can just take that apart and same sort of thing, just use the two needle saddle stitch and do those. Just a little tip here, if you have trouble getting your thread through the eye of the needle, just flatten it by pinching it against the body of the needle and that will make it more like the right shape for going through the eye. I may have to re-trim this thread as well. Oh, may just be managing it there. Don't know if I'm getting enough through, yes. Sometimes you have to re-trim it and get it squared off again. Anyway, it's just a little tip worth knowing. It's very enjoyable doing something like this because you still feel that you're giving a rather nice vintage item a bit of new life. You also, so I, I find with this sort of thing, you learn little bits as you go along. You think, oh, okay, that's what they've done there. And you see it and you think that's quite a nice idea. So I've just sewn down this side here. That's all nicely redone. I can just burn those ends off to bind them over. And then there's no, oops, burning the wrong bit. There's no risk of them coming undone. Just squash them down. That beds that in very nicely. I'll do the same to the other side and that will be that strap reattached. So my couple of lines of stitching are in there. So that's all now secured. The rest of the stitching on here seems absolutely fine. So I'm not going to, if you like, look for trouble. I'd rather keep it as original as I can. The roller buckle just seems a bit flattened. So what I'm going to do there is get some pliers and just try and tweak it in a bit. So just seeing if I can get it back to being slightly rounded. It's a gentle like press each side. So I've got the roller buckle turning perfectly now. What I had to do in the end was actually use my pointed scratch rule and just put it down each side just to try and re-stretch out that tube and then just very slightly reshape it with the pliers. So for the touch up, I'm just gonna do it very slightly 
and what I've got here is some Feebing's uh, um, dark brown pro dye, so spirit based dye, in my Montana refillable marker pen. And I'm just going to sort of touch it a little just to try and blend a bit of this in and then wipe it with a rag. I'm not going to do a huge amount, but I'm just going to do enough just here in particular where I feel it's a bit more creased. That's probably enough. I just really want to take the extreme coloration off. I can at this point touch my stitching over and um, blend that in. So I'll just bring this up closer to camera so you can see it. So I can literally just do that and that immediately looks like the original. The original was actually machine sewn, so um, I've done saddle stitch. That's sort of a pretty good matching. I will do the same that side, I think. There we are. So that's the stitching coloured in and just the worst of the sort of uh, colour difference on the front there. I, I still want that character and I wanted to show as it does go, but it was just a bit more extreme than I sort of wanted there really, being a bit fussy. That's that. So we're all in seam wise. I like the pattern on the rest of it, so I'm not going to go and be dying any of this. I like that's aged and it just looks nice. It was just a bit extra there, so that's blended that. So what I'm going to do now is this poor lever is desperate for a feed. So I have some neat's foot oil and I'm going to lavish this bag with a decent amount of this. It's an excellent restorer. It will give the natural oils back into that leather and make it last many more years. So I've got my Neats foot oil I've decanted into this little tub. I've got a wool dauber and I'm just going to put it over the bag. Now it will darken the surface of the bag but it will just keep soaking in. This leather it must be so hungry But what it does, it will preserve the leather, it will waterproof it. And if you have an old bag, it really does help it along. It will stop it cracking and splitting. It's really sort of putting like the natural oils back into your leather. It will enrich it. As you wipe it, it will actually clean it as well. But I can imagine this would probably take a few coats. It's sinking in quite rapidly. I'll put some paper on my bench because it tends to get quite messy. This um, bend over section I want to put in quite a, a generous lashing of it. That will enrich and nourish that beautifully. My dad used to collect horse brasses. I'm not entirely certain why he did actually. I mean it was an enjoyable thing to do. I think he saw one in an antique shop, got a bit interested in them and started collecting them. And I can remember every now and again, he'd get the neat's foot all out and he would 
treat all his leather and it always looked rather good. I've actually got uh, one of my dad's, well, it's actually a lunge. I think you call it a lunge lead. It's the biggest training lead, uh, <laughs> like a very long dog lead for training your horse. And um, I've got it in my workshop, so I'll show it to you. I rather like it because it has all these uh, brass little um, sort of symbols on it. So it's got clubs, diamonds, hearts, etc. Probably appeal to a card player. Do the straps in a second because I think they'll get a bit extra messy. I want to get a lot soaking into this uh, concertina bellow part, so I'm being a bit more again, a bit more generous in here. Right, that's soaking in. I'm going to give this area another bit of special attention. The fold. Well, I'll let that rest a little bit. It's had about four coats of the Neat's Foot Oil and it's soaked through on the flap. So I don't want any more, otherwise it would start to get messy, <laughs> hitting a balance. But no, I know it's gone through the leather, which is the main thing as it was quite starving. So I'll let that dry off, soak in, and then I'll give it a rub over with a cloth. And that bag will be ready for use. It'll be lovely. It means so much more when I say my son bought it for me it's very kind of him so i hope that's helped you if you have a bag that you want to refurbish you can see actually even now with the stitching you wouldn't actually know which part i had done in fact i'm having to look at it twice myself to realize but that's the stitching i've done just there and on the side it was just there Really pleased with the way this has turned out. Look at that. Lovely bag. Got all its nice patina. Nice bit of gloss, a nice bit of wear. We're ready for enjoyable use again. It's nice capacity actually. There we are. Once that's used a little bit more, it will redevelop another nice little patina. Nice new lease of life. I enjoy using this. I can actually, because of its concertina action here, I can quite happily fit quite a few items. Dare I say it? Face masks, umbrellas, all sorts of things you need nowadays. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching that one and I hope it's given a few little hints and tips if you have a, a vintage bag to restore. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> bye bye then. Bye.